Hi, welcome to Barkhart Bookshelf, a video series about books and the drinks they inspire. My name is Elias, and today we're talking about The Dead Take the A Train by Cassandra Caw and Richard Cadre. It's the fourth week of October, and spooky season is in full swing. We have had some really fantastic horror novels and uh, gothics that came before, and here we are with one of my favorite books of the year, The Dead Take the A-Train. I love, I love, I love when we get to read a Cassandra call because I know everything they write is going to have a drink in it. And The Dead Take the A-Train is no exception, as you can see here. The Dead Take the A-Train is an urban fantasy horror set in New York City. It's this sort of uh, horror adaptation of the classic occult detective trope. It's sort of like the Wolf of Wall Street draped in occult intestines. If you like the craft sequence by Max Gladstone, I think you're really going to like this one as well. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more body horror than the craft sequence, but very much in that like dealing with finance people and urbanity with death magic and fantasy and uh, lots and lots of tentacles, as you can probably imagine from the cover. It's the story of Julie Cruz, a uh, late 20s, she's 29, same age as me, uh, on the cusp of her 30s. She's a sort of problem solver in this magical community, and that means that she's got lots of scars and lots of tattoos and lots of trauma and uh, a cocaine addiction and a problem with alcohol in the tradition of all the best noir detectives she's going through it and we get to watch her go through it some more and by her side is a really wonderful collection of uh, allies and a really nasty collection of enemies. We see the return of her childhood friend, uh, this young woman who goes on to uh, develop these these deep feelings of romance for her and for each other. Uh, my particular favorite character, Dead Air, who is a, a gamer. You know, we love a gamer here on Barkhart Bookshelf. I know, y'all know, we love that who uh, is essentially the priest of these numinous not-gods of the internet, them. Uh, he's a real delight. This immortal landlady, uh, bon vivant Saint Joan, who's a real just charming uh, and supportive member of Julie's community, and some nasty, nasty, finance bro, like incel, jerky antagonists, and then monsters. Monsters with tentacles, monsters with egg sacs, monsters with great yellow globules of fat and bright red arterial blood and charnel smell. And because we have Cascaw who's playing a role in the prose here, it's still beautiful. You're like, all right, there's all this nasty meat happening. And I like it. I like it. So, highly recommend. I know that I'm really excited to also be checking out some of Richard Cadre's solo work, Sandman Slim, The Grand Dark, uh, all on my TBR, and hopefully things we'll get to read soon, and we had to have a drink. So, our drink today is called The Gibbet. Uh, it is a riff on the classic Gimlet, and let me tell you, this is rocket fuel. We have a playlist of low ABV cocktails, things that don't have a lot of alcohol by volume. I'm thinking with this one, we need to make a playlist of those high-intensity hits, because this is a cocktail with a kick. And we are going to start by taking our glass, taking our dish, Halloween dish of uh, kosher salt, and rimming the edge of that glass. I've got a damp paper towel here for our gibbet, 
and we're going to just run that along the rim of the glass. You can do this with a lime peel or a lime wedge. I just find that for even coverage, a damp paper towel really does the trick quite well. And then we're going to want to get that down into the glass and just sort of run it around the edge. You want that kosher salt because we have these nice large flakes of salt that are going to adhere to the edge of the glass. And you can get that as lightly or as heavily rimmed as you like. You know, with tentacles, you're going to get some of this brininess. And so we're bringing the brine with our salt rim there. Set that aside and get to the build of our cocktail. As I said, this is high intensity. We're going to start with an ounce and a half of Navy Strength Gin. This is an overproof gin, uh, very, I believe this one is 57% alcohol by volume. I really like these Heyman's gins. Uh, they're made in London. Uh, they've got a really nice blend of botanicals from the high intensity Royal Dock Navy Strength Gin all the way down to that slow gin and the Old Tom that we like to use here on the channel as well. So we've got our ounce and a half of Navy Strength Gin. We're going to get one ounce of that lime cordial, that sort of sweetened lime juice that's got the lime peel in it, that real depth of lime flavor, uh, the richness, the uh, intensity of the oils where you have that texture as well. And then we're going to get, to bring that extra bit of brightness, just half an ounce of fresh lime juice as well. So we really want that blend of the oiliness and the sweetness of the lime cordial and that zippy zing, zing, zing of the fresh lime juice. Next, we're going to get a quarter of an ounce of absinthe. Absinthe, as you know from this channel, has a lot of intensity of flavor. A little goes a long way. And that quarter ounce is going to, one, bring some more intensity, and two, bring that really wonderful anise and um, wormwood and green sort of licorice quality to our gibbet without overpowering the lime, the gin. And then to round things out, we're bringing the heat with a bar spoon of that hot chili tincture. So really nice bit of spice in there. You're gonna feel this on your lips. You're gonna feel that warmth there. You're gonna feel the fire in your gibbet. And there we have it. Our gibbet, get our ice down in there. Seal our shaker. Shake it up, wake it up. Nice and frothy because, of course, we've got that really high alcohol by volume, so we want to get it nice and blended. There we go. Once that's cooled down, the tins are frosty. Take it off, get our Hawthorne strainer, and strain into our cocktail glass. Perfect. And there you have it. So. This is the Gibbet, inspired by The Dead Take the A Train. The Dead Take the A Train is the first book in the Carrion Cities duology. I am so excited for book two, uh, hoping for news on that front soon. The book is available now. It really is the perfect read for Spooky Season. If you like urban fantasy, if you like body horror but make it pretty, if you like bad things happening to bad people, and bad things happening to mostly okay people. This is a book for you. Lots of sapphic longing, lots of really cool, squicky, cosmic, magic, horror, gunk. We love it. 
Got a link to snag the book in the description down below. Got links to various forms of social media, including Twitter and Instagram, where there's always a written version of today's recipe. Try the drink. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Hit that like button. It makes me so very, very happy. Share this video with your friends. It really does help us to find new audiences. Make sure you tune in later this week for our classic horror monthly bonus episode and next week for our final read of spooky season on halloween itself until next time cheers <laughs>